Welcome back, everybody. Well, the time has finally arrived, the time in which I am going to be disclosing which power amplifier you selected as the best power amplifier under $30,000. Are you guys ready to find out what you chose? Okay, let's get started. Welcome back everybody. Please subscribe, hit that notifications button so that you are informed each time I publish a new video. First and foremost, I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this shootout. Um, the intent was for me to bring you affordable power amplifiers. And I understand some of you guys have been very vocal about the fact that none of these amplifiers are affordable for many of you. But if you have followed my channel, you should know by now that I primarily cater to the ultra high end, which is why my channel doesn't really have 100,000 subscribers or 200,000 subscribers. And it probably never will because very few folks, very few people in the world can afford some of the incredible electronics that I typically display on this channel. And I'm okay with that. Um, but the hope is that by me changing to something more affordable in comparison to some of the amplifiers that I have here, that some of you guys may actually begin to subscribe. Most of you guys, as a matter of fact, over 50% of the viewers out there have not subscribed but are watching my channel. And I urge you guys, the more subscribers I see, the more you urge me to begin to perhaps explore more affordable components. So. Take that at face value and remember what I'm saying. Hit that subscribe button, please. So that I understand that you guys are interested in me bringing more affordable gear, okay? Now, let's get started with the final analysis as to which amplifier you guys have selected. And as you see right now, the results are in, okay? The results are in, and it looks like you guys have selected... <laughs> Amplifier number two as the best power amplifier of this group. Now, if you're wondering which amplifier is which, let me tell you right now. Amplifier number one, Simaudio version two, 860 version two. Amplifier number two, Luxman, and amplifier number three is the Constellation Taurus. Now, I have read a lot of the comments that you guys have left under the comment section. And I must say that very interesting. Some of you guys are actually extremely good at articulating uh, the differences between the power amplifiers. And if I'm being honest, when you guys write and I read, okay, you guys see me very active under the comment section. It's shocking how many of you guys nail the comparisons, nail exactly what I hear in the room, which is a testament to my efforts in here to bring you as close as possible to the presentation that I am trying to put together inside the room. Okay, now talking about the winner, the Luxman 10X, your winner, the Luxman 10X, um, I cannot deny as far as why most of you felt the Luxman M10X is the better amplifier of this shootout. Now, I want to be clear I say this. That is what you guys have selected. My opinion may be different. Now, the Luxman M10X um, is notorious for being a very engaging amplifier. Extremely smooth, musical, uh, some people may call it euphonic, meaning it has a certain type of sound, okay, that it shoots for. Um, I believe Luxman has definitely made vast improvements between the 900U and the M10X. Now, one of the biggest things that stood out to me, by the way, was the bass. The bass of the M10X is definitely on a whole new level than the predecessor of the 900U. I also love the sound staging of this unit. Um, if you guys have noticed, I mentioned, as I had mentioned earlier, 
these two amplifiers tend to be on the sweet, more romantic, engaging side. And then the SIM audio is shooting for more of a neutral presentation. This is pretty much an answer. This is pretty much something you guys need to comprehend. Most of you select the Luxman, which means the majority of you guys are looking for more of a romantic, sweet, engaging presentation. And that's what these two bring to the table. Now, some of you guys didn't quite connect with the SIM Audio 860 version 2 because you had your own opinion about being perhaps not as engaging, not enough air as these two. Um, and I can understand that because the presentation of the SIM Audio is more neutral, is more, I guess, true to what's playing in behind it. These two are adding their own thing, more air, more uh, of this engaging sound and Yes, you have to try a little less to make them sound right, okay? Because they already come with a beautiful sound. So it's more of a plug and play design, if that makes sense. I don't know if it's a plug and play design, the right word, but it's more than likely that if you insert any of these two amplifiers into your system, you're probably gonna get exceptional results. That does not mean that the SIM audio is not going to sound great, but this is more of the it's like a blank sheet of paper and you have a pencil in your hand. Now you got to get to draw. Okay. This is more what the SIM audio is. You have to be ready to pick up a pencil and begin to draw and any mistakes you make, you have to be willing to erase them because the amplifier will let you hear and see those mistakes. Okay. With these two, you kind of have a, a Sharpie to draw something that's a little easier. There is, a lot more forgiveness. You are going to simply have an easier time accommodating these two amplifiers into your system. However, some of you guys may hate the fact that these amplifiers have their own sound. So every song is pretty much gonna sound the same. Okay, that's just how it is. If you play classic rock, it's gonna, it's gonna have the same feeling as if you played pop or jazz or blues, it just will. Okay, and some of you guys welcome that, which is totally fine. I love, for the record, I love all of these three amplifiers. Any of you guys, absolutely anyone would be happy with these three amplifiers. I can assure you that you would not be disappointed by owning any of these three amplifiers, but it really now has to do with the rest of your system. What do you want to accomplish with your system? Are you looking to simply be submerged? relaxed um, and absolutely just forget about your day, your nine to five, your stressful job, your current situation at home, issues in your life, probably will be, this will probably be the easier option to live with, okay? Because it's gonna give you a little less headaches. Now, what I mean by headaches isn't problems, it's just the fact that this animal, this 860 version two, simply will be more honest with you. And you may not necessarily want a component that's more honest. Okay, now one of the things you have to remember is the SIM Audio 860 version 2 needs approximately two to three days of being on, okay? SIM Audio recommends that you never turn off the amplifier, which is one of the reasons why it hardly runs hot. Even if you drive it hard, you're not gonna find the amplifier cooking your room. Your listening area will be just fine, okay? So I like the fact that once you turn it on, you need to come back about two, three days and simply forget about the amplifier. It hits its stride without a problem. And I think that, you know, that is a good or a bad thing depending on who you are. But the fact that the amplifier does not run hot means that you don't have to worry about turning it on and off. Just leave it on, forget about the amplifier, okay? Now the Luxman on the other hand is more of the amplifier that you turn on and within 30, 45 minutes, it's ready to go. Now it does get hot, maybe because it has the beginning watts are class A, so it does get hot. Um, but the Luxman is pretty much up and running within 30 to 45 minutes. You have a magical presentation. And then after you're done listening, you can turn it off and forget about the amplifier. Now, speaking about Constellation, this is the amplifier that has the most power out of all three. If I have demanding speakers, any speaker that I is speakers that are probably 86 efficiency, 87 and under, 
I probably would say you should stick to the Constellation, okay? The Constellation is going to give you more power, um, and it's a lot more stable with the more difficult loads. Now, that said, I do feel that the Constellation here has the largest sound stage out of the three, okay? Some of you guys even loved and picked that up, that particular attribute. The presentation is sounding bigger, um, and some of you guys love the mid-range of the Constellation as well. Now, the Luxman had absolutely no issue driving the S7s behind me. But if I was in a bigger room, uh, maybe even more difficult speakers, I would say you probably need the monos. You probably need to buy two of these to just be okay and not running out of power, okay? Because it is 150 watts, although I will say it is some of the most delicious and powerful 150 watts I have ever heard. Okay, um, but what I like about the Luxman, just like the Simario, is that they, it gives you the flexibility of buying the stereo, either one, and then down the road, when your budget allows, you can go ahead and buy the second unit and simply flip the button that you see here on the Luxman. This button that you see right here, you flip it on the Luxman, okay, and you also do the same thing for the Simario right here. Okay, once you do that, you are going to be in business with a lot of power and uh, you should have absolutely no issues driving most loudspeakers out there when these two are configured in mono. Now, I will say one thing to you guys, okay? I know some of you guys have been um, talking about, oh, 30,000, 20,000, it's still a lot of money for an amplifier. I'm here to tell you folks, um, I have owned a ton of amplifiers, over 300 amplifiers and still counting. Um, and I have tried more affordable amplifiers. You can see those on earlier videos. And unfortunately guys, yes, I hate to break it to you, um, but I haven't found an amplifier that's $10,000 and under that can keep up with either, either one of these amplifiers. I just haven't. Um, I wanted to bring a Macintosh amplifier on here, the MC462. Unfortunately, I had absolutely no access to it, and I also wanted to bring a Griffin Essence to make it part of this shootout, but I had no access to it, okay? So I gave you three options that are also some of my favorite options uh, for under 30K, and I think the results were actually very satisfying. A lot of you guys enjoyed uh, what you heard through YouTube, and I gotta say it one more time, folks, it is a hell of a lot of work, folks. It is a tremendous amount of work to have to put these amplifiers on here, then put them away, then move these massive you know, crates from under, then rearranging the room and making magic happen for you all, making sure that I have the right decibel levels for each amplifier and making sure that things are as equal as possible. These are some of the things that most of you guys don't ever get to see have no idea the level of work and financial commitment that I have to make so that you guys can sit back and enjoy this, okay? It isn't easy what I do. Nobody's doing what I do. It's, it's no secret, you guys know this. Nobody's doing this, nobody on YouTube, right? And I will continue to do this for you all. Now, going back to the results, you guys having Luxman as the king of these three amplifiers, I can honestly say that Luxman has completely hit it out of the park with this M10X, okay? It, they have really out, they really outdid themselves, okay? They really elevated the former 900U. Now, does that mean that the 900U is no longer a good amplifier? No, that's not what I'm saying. If you find a good deal on a used 900U, by all means, go for it, okay? Because this is gonna cost you significantly more money because it is the newer amplifier. What I am telling you right now is, this is certainly a superior amplifier to the 900U, although it looks about the same. I can assure you that whatever they have done inside absolutely changes the entire presentation, and it really makes me um, wonder what else they do, because all the things they talked about on their website as far as the improvements seem to be very minor, uh, but now, but listening to the amplifier tells you a different story. Listening to this amplifier tells you that a lot more went in it. 
Now, the Sim Audio 860 version 2 right here has always been one of my favorite amplifiers, okay? But I will say that the biggest amplifier, the one amplifier that has my interest, I will say, is the triple eights that you are seeing on your screen right now. Sim Audio 888 are the ones that I really want to buy and I want to bring in here so that I can evaluate it against the boulders and the griffins of the world. That monoblock is $120,000. That amplifier is absolutely insane. And I have no reason to doubt that that could easily be one of the best amplifiers out there today. Unfortunately, those units are hardly seen here in the United States. Very few locations, stores have them. I have not had the chance to even see them. Uh, there might be an opportunity for me to come up to Sim Audio in Canada and go and do another factory tour. I hear great things about the factory. Maybe get a chance to see those triple eights in action and hear them. I am extremely excited to try the bigger brother of the 860 version 2 because I believe for $120,000, it can't be an amplifier that will let me down. Well, I know you guys want to hear it from me and want to know my opinion as to how I ranked the amplifiers from inside the room because the room has a different conversation with me. Being inside the room is different than being on the other side of this camera. What I can tell you is that is absolutely and strictly my business as to which amplifier I rate the number one amplifier out of these three. If you are interested in knowing my opinion on which amplifier I would personally choose if I'm building a system be sure to subscribe and become a member. Be sure to become a member of my website that will be launching soon. Within that website, I will be giving you my personal take, what I would choose if I'm building my system, okay? Right now, it's about what you guys have selected and I am in alignment with your decision that the Luxman M10X is definitely one of the most special amplifiers today. But once again, either of these three amplifiers, any amplifier will make most of you out there extremely happy. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate all the love, all the effort. And before I forget, yep, I have a new king the boss, the power amplifier that has completely schooled me and taught me what an amplifier should be doing and what a real amplifier is all about. That amplifier is hiding in my room as I stand here and you guys will meet it real soon. It took me approximately 30 seconds after I heard it before I started to cut the check because I couldn't let it go out of my hands. That allowed me to, unfortunately, make the decision to sell my Boulder 3060. So you probably will not be hearing any more about the Boulder 3060, although it's still the best stereo amplifier I have ever owned in my lab. And you guys are extremely clear as to, as to what that power amplifier is doing. Unfortunately, the King is here, the new power amplifier that redefines the ultra high end. And that to me is without a doubt, the most devastating, impressive, absolutely mind boggling to the point that sometimes I sit down in my chair, giggling in disbelief because I'm still unable to accept what I'm hearing. But soon you guys will get to meet this special power amplifier. Peace.